you don't need to be an electrician or even that smart to install your very own smart switch or dimmer. But you should understand some switch wiring basics and I have lots of tips today that I'm gonna show you to make it safe and easy for you to do it yourself. We're gonna be installing a Leviton smart switch to replace this single pole dumb switch. If you have more than one switch connected to your light or another unique situation, stick around because we have some help for you towards the end of this video. Oh, and just a quick note up front that while I have replaced dozens and dozens of switches without killing myself or starting any fires, and I did earn my electronics merit badge in seventh grade, I am not a licensed electrician, so please look up your local codes before trying anything stupid. Before we dive into our switch install, there are four types of wires you need to understand when you're installing a smart switch. Line, load, neutral, and ground. The line wire, that's the hot wire. It brings power from the electrical panel into your switch. Now that's how I remember it. Line equals in, and it has an in right in the name. Makes sense, right? The next is the load wire. The load wire sends the power from the switch out to the light or fan or, or doomsday device, whatever it's connected to. Out has an O, load has an O. Doesn't work quite as well, but it, it's something. The next we have is the neutral wire. Now this is the wire bringing electricity from all of the devices on the circuit back to your electrical panel. Now remember, electricity works in a circle, so it has to get back home somehow, hopefully through the neutral wire and not through you. And last we have the ground wire. This is a safety wire in case of a short or overload. Most of the excess electricity from a short should run to the ground via this wire instead of electrocuting you or starting your house on fire. Now usually, and I say usually because you never know what some idiot might have done wiring your house before you got here, Line or load wires are black or sometimes red. Neutral wires are white or a light gray and ground wires are a bare copper or green wire. Now I know working with electricity can be intimidating, but you really don't need to be afraid of it. Getting shocked by a live wire from a switch box is, is like getting tackled by a linebacker. Now odds are it's not gonna kill you, but you're definitely gonna feel it and why take that risk? So always turn the power off before messing around in an electrical box. Don't stand in a bucket of water. And here's a tip, never trust the labels on the breaker box. I learned that the hard way once and it is a lesson you will never forget. Please share in the comments if you've ever done the same. To avoid that, just get yourself a non-contact voltage tester. They're like 10 or 20 bucks and well worth the investment. So to get started, we have to turn the breaker off for the switch. We'll take the plate off and then we're gonna test it with our voltage tester. Nothing is flashing red so we can unscrew it and pull out the box. Now some smart switches use line and load wires interchangeably. But if the smart switch you are installing requires specific connections for the line and the load, you have to know which is which. To determine that, we need to go back and turn the breaker back on. Now, using our non-contact voltage tester, we test each wire going into the switch. Whichever one is beeping is hot, and that is our line wire. If both wires are beeping hot, the switch is probably on, so turn that off and then try again. Mark your line wire with a piece of tape, then go back and turn the breaker off again. Now at this point, especially if you have a multi-gang box, I would highly recommend sticking your tester into the box and testing the rest of the wires that are in there. You never know if there's another live circuit running wires into that same box, and you don't want a rude surprise when you reach your hand in there. A rude, painful surprise! Once power is off for all the circuits in the box, now we can disconnect the switch. Either unscrew the terminals, or if it's a push-in type connection, just save yourself the hassle and just cut the wires off. To connect the new switch, it's best practice to start with the ground wire. Look for the bundle of bare copper wires in the box. You'll probably have to do what is called a pigtail, where you connect a short wire from the ground bundle to the switch. Most junction boxes are plastic these days, but if you have a metal junction box, you'll need to connect the ground wire to the grounding screw in the metal box. Fortunately, this box is plastic and already has a bare wire pigtail from the previous switch, so we can just connect that to our switch. Next, we'll connect the neutral wire, which will also require a pigtail from the neutral bundle. The bundle probably has a wire nut holding it together that just screws on and off, like this one. To make a wire nut connection, first strip about three quarters of an inch of insulation off the wire. Now line up the ends of all the wires and twist them together with the pliers. Make sure the ends of each wire still line up. You can trim the ends of the wires to make them even if necessary. Now take the wire nut and twist it on nice and tight, twisting the whole bundle several times. Give the wires a tug to make sure the connection is secure. One thing to watch out for as you are adding a wire is that you do not overload the wire nut. Most household wiring is either 12 or 14 gauge wire. The smaller the gauge number, the thicker the wire. Why? Well, because when you're dealing with something as potentially lethal as electricity, it's a good idea to make things as confusing as possible. For 14 gauge wire, orange nuts can connect a maximum of two wires, yellow, four wires, and red, five wires. So keep that in mind. Another option that is even easier for us DIYers are lever lock or Wagyu connectors. With these, each wire has its own slot. You flip the lever up, slide in the wire, and flip the lever back down to secure. Easy peasy. They are definitely better than wire nuts in pretty much every way. As a final option, if you want to potentially burn your house down and void your homeowner's insurance, you can connect the wires together with electrical tape, but I don't recommend it. 
Now that our neutral pigtail is connected to the neutral bundle, we can connect it to the neutral terminal on the switch. This switch has a clamp connection that requires a straight wire. You can see how much to strip off the wire on the guide on the back of the switch. Once it's stripped, we just slide it under the clamp and screw it down. With a regular screw connection, you'll have to make a J hook using a needle nose pliers. Then have the hook pointing to the right as you screw it in. That's the best way to make sure it doesn't come undone. Next, we can connect the line wire that we marked with the tape to the line terminal and the load wire to the load terminal. Per the instructions for this switch, the line wire goes to the bulk terminal and the load wire connects to the erd terminal. Always check your instructions before you make your connections. Give everything a final tug to make sure they are secure. So now we need to get the wires back in the box. This is often the most difficult part of the whole process because some of these smart switches are obnoxiously large compared to traditional dumb switches. As you push the wires in, you're not supposed to kink the wires and you're supposed to keep the neutral and hot wires separated if possible. Um, good luck with that. Just do your best to fold the wires down along the wall, then fold them gently up into the box, but it's gonna get cramped in there no matter what you do. So yeah, like I said, good luck. Once you have the wires pressed into the box as best you can, you can insert the switch into the box and screw it in. Once it is nice and level, you can add the cover plate and you're done. Now this cover snaps right in, but if your cover plate has screws, make sure to leave those screws slightly askew just to drive your OCD family a little nuts. Now we can go back and turn the power back on and give the switch a whirl. And it works. Good job, team. Of course, our next battle is connecting the switch to your hub. Depending on the type of switch you have, Z-Wave, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, Matter, and what hub you have, the procedure to add the device can vary quite a bit. Now it usually involves putting the switch into pairing mode and then the hub into discovery mode. The turns may vary, but they're basically the same. And then the switch and hub will find each other. I'm adding this Leviton Z-Wave switch to the Homey Pro here. We got it added and now it is working just great. Once it's connected to your hub, you can do all sorts of fun automations with it. So that install was pretty slick, but there are some issues you may run into when installing a smart switch. Number one, are dimmer switches wired the same way as non-dimmer switches? Yes. But if you're replacing a regular switch with a dimmer, make sure you have dimmable bulbs in the sockets or you can melt the electronics in the new dimmer switch. I also learned that the hard way. Two, what if there's no neutral wire in the box? Well, I'd recommend moving to a newer house, but there are some smart switch options out there that don't require a neutral. Leviton and Brighton, Akara, Lutron, they all have non-neutral versions. They're a little more expensive and some of them require a bridge to connect, so check before you buy, but they are available. Three, can I use smart bulbs with smart switches? Generally, no, because smart bulbs require constant power. But you can get a switch like this Innovelli Red that allows you to turn off the internal relay in the switch. So basically, it passes the power through the switch and acts like a button controller. So pressing the switch sends a signal to the hub to turn off the light bulb instead of cutting power at the switch. But that may be for another video. Four, what if my junction box isn't big enough for the new switch? Now, I have definitely run into this problem. Uh, first off, there are some smart switches that are smaller than others, so look for the thinnest switch you can find. Uh, in Brighton has a thin version. Casa switches are, are pretty thin, but I'm not a huge fan of Wi-Fi switches. The other option is to increase the size of the box. Now, you can do this by getting a box extender that sticks out from the wall, you know, half an inch, inch or so. Uh, these are easy to install, but they're ugly and your wife will definitely not like them. Uh, or you can remove the original box completely and replace it with a deeper one. Now, this is not an easy fix. Uh, but it can be done and let me know if that's a, something you want to see in a future video. Okay, so what do I do if there are two switches controlling the same light? Now this is known as a three-way switch and it requires a smart switch specifically designed for a three-way application. Uh, the Leviton switch we installed today actually does have a uh, terminal for the three-way connection, but not all switches do, so you'll have to check before you buy. Why is it called a three-way switch if there's only two switches? Well, because like wire gauges, big electricity just wants to make things as confusing as possible. Seven, is wiring a three-way switch the same as wiring a single switch? Kind of? Installing three-way switches is definitely something you can do yourself, but you really need to know what you're doing to get it right. Now we have an entire series of videos on wiring three-way switches that you should definitely check out. And the best way to get started is to check out this video right here so you're ready for your first three-way. Wait, I don't think that's how we want to end this video.